In this video, we're going to discuss cap and trade. So cap and trade is a system of marketable permits that is used to address negative externalities. So I want to give you a specific negative externality. Let's talk about pollution. And in particular, we'll talk about sulfur dioxide emissions. So sulfur dioxide leads to acid rain. And acid rain can kill fish and insects and so forth. So let's say it's killing fish in a nearby stream and that there are people who fish in that stream and catch that fish and so now a cost has been imposed on them, right? So let's say that the factory that is producing electricity or whatever, they are creating this sulfur dioxide with their production. It's creating acid rain, it's killing the fish and imposing costs on the people who do the fishing. And so that's the nature of the negative externality. And so there's gonna be a market failure in that there's gonna be more sulfur dioxide produced than what is socially efficient. And so cap and trade says, well, we're gonna do a couple of things to, to stop that. And what we're gonna do is, first of all, we're gonna put a cap on the total amount of sulfur dioxide emissions. So you might say, okay, look, we're gonna have a cap, we're gonna have, I don't know how sulfur dioxide is measured, but let's say 1 million tons is the cap on sulfur dioxide. So firms cannot produce or generate more than a million tons of sulfur dioxide in any given year. So that's the cap in cap and trade. But the second part is you say, okay, look, now that we've done that, we're gonna set up a market where firms can actually trade and buy and sell permits to emit sulfur dioxide. So here's how this would work. So let's say that we have an industry with three firms. We have firm A, we have firm B, and then we have firm C. And we allocate initially, we say, okay, well, how much does each firm get of these million tons to, 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 to produce? Let's say that firm A is given 200,000, and firm B is 200,000, and then firm C is 600,000. Now these could be allocated based on historical emissions and say, well, this firm C, firm C is a lot larger, we should give them a larger credit, uh, but this could be cr create issues because somebody might say, hey, well, look, that's rewarding bad behavior. They were emitting a lot, they should be punished and, and so forth, but you could also auction the credits in any event these are the initial allocations of credits. So firm A in any given year has credits given to it so it can produce up to 200,000 tons of sulfur dioxide. Now here's the thing. Let's say that firm A gets really good. They have they have clean tech they invest in clean technology and they say hey we do a really good job here and we can actually get our emissions of sulfur dioxide below $200,000 or 200,000 tons. So we say, okay, well, we'll get two, maybe we'll do 100,000 tons, and then we will we can sell the difference, right? Because we only, we got credit for 200,000, but we are able to invest in technology, and yet where we only produced 100,000 tons of sulfur dioxide, maybe firm C hasn't invested in much in, in technology, and so firm C can say, well, look, we would like to buy 100,000 of credits because maybe we think we're gonna be at 700,000, right? So firm C, it says, okay, look, we will buy credits. Now, you might think, hey, that's a bad thing. That's a bad thing because now this firm, that, this firm C hasn't done a really good job and, and now they're actually emitting more than they were supposed to. But look, the total amount of emissions, the total cap is unchanged. We said as a society we could deal with a million tons and now that's happened. And so even though firm C might not have done a good job cleaning up, firm A invested in clean technology and had an incentive and said, hey, look, we could actually sell our permits. We can make money off of this. And so they can trade them and buy and sell them. And so there's an incentive for firms to do cleaner technology and, and so forth. And then we also as a society get the peace of mind of knowing that, look, a million tons is the amount of sulfur dioxide that can be produced, and that's it. Now I wanna show you with a graph how this is basically equivalent to using a Pigouvian tax, which we talked about before with setting a corrective tax, and that'll get us to ultimately to, to the same outcome. So let's say we've got price, and we've got quantity, and let's say that this here is the marginal social cost of pollution and then let's say that we'll call this the mark well let me do a different color the marginal benefit that should be a straight line forgive me 
this is a marginal benefit of pollution. I know it's hard to think of a marginal benefit of pollution, so you can also think of it as the marginal cost of cleanup or marginal cost of abatement, which is like cleaning up pollution. But we'll just, right now, we'll just say, okay, right here where our marginal social cost equals the marginal benefit, that should be our optimal, that's our socially efficient quantity right this is our socially efficient quantity of sulfur dioxide okay that's the socially efficient amount and let's that was we said a million tons right we said a million tons now what we do is we say hey look we also can look at the marginal private cost to the firm right that's creating the sulfur dioxide so their marginal private cost is lower than the marginal social cost because the firm doesn't internalize the cost to the people doing the fishing who have fewer fish to catch and so forth so the actual so the equilibrium absent cap and trade absent pigouvian tax and so forth is going to be we'll call this we'll call this q prime and then this one will be q star so q prime let's say that it's one million five hundred thousand tons of sulfur dioxide so this is this is inefficient right because we're overproducing sulfur dioxide more than is socially optimal because the factory did not have any incentive to take in the external cost to the people doing the fishing and, and and so forth right so we said when we talked about a Peguvian tax we could actually set an amount here as the tax right see this difference so basically the external cost the marginal external cost cost of the externality the cost of the fishermen and so forth that could be set equal to a tax, right? So that, that could be set equal to a tax, and that would bring about the socially efficient quantity. So we call that, that tax would be a price mechanism. This is a way we change the price, we force the factory to face the full social cost of its actions, and then because it, we change the price to the firm, it naturally adjusts to the socially efficient quantity. However, with cap and trade, we're doing the reverse. We're setting the quantity. We're setting the quantity and say, hey, we're going to set Q star at a million. Instead of saying, look, we're going to do this tax and, and then do that, we're just going to set the quantity, which is nice because you can say, look, we're going to set the quantity based on science. Maybe we know the scientists tell us a million tons is the, the absolute max. And with that, with that, because with that tax, in theory, you end up at the socially efficient quantity, but if you didn't set the tax right or something like that, or where there could be issues. But in any event, now we're going to, with cap and trade, set the quantity and then let price adjust. So in each case, so, so, cap, so tax is a price mechanism, and then cap and trade is a quantity mechanism. So cap and trade, we're setting the quantity and then allowing price to adjust right through the sale of the marketable permits and, and so forth but with the Peguvian tax we're using a price mechanism and then the quantity will naturally adjust as firms change their behavior uh, based on the, the fact that they're internalizing the social cost but in theory in theory both the corrective tax and the cap and trade the system of marketable permits both lead to the socially efficient equilibrium